As a professional data analyst with a master's degree in data science, I have mastered multiple programming languages and can write highly optimized SQL queries blindfolded. I earn over a quarter of a million dollars annually and have two highly profitable consulting side hustles. I'm a Tableau expert and my domain expertise in Power BI rivals that of God himself. But despite all that, perhaps my most impressive achievement is that I was able to learn R in under 30 days. And if you follow this learning plan, you can too. So if you're here, you probably already know what R is, but in case you don't, if you're wondering whether or not you should learn R or if it's right for you, I'll tell you a little bit about it. R is a statistical computing language. It's used very commonly in industry and it's particularly useful for creating dashboards and visualizations, but it's also a very powerful machine learning tool as well. So it's got a broad range of applications. So if you're just beginning your data science and analytics journey, R is a really great place to start if you're trying to learn the math behind a lot of the algorithms you're gonna use, if you wanna learn about visualizations and dashboards. And this learning plan I'm about to share with you is how I taught myself R in less than 30 days. If you wanna become very competent in R in less than a month, you're gonna to have to spend a few hours every day going through the plan I'm about to lay out in order to really absorb the material. It's possible to go through it faster, but I really don't think you're gonna gain very much if you just try to rush through without doing some of the exercises that are included in the materials that I'm gonna share. So like I said, this is how I learned R, and when I was learning R, I was just at a time in my life where I had plenty of free time to do with what I pleased. So if you're really serious about getting this done in four weeks, just be prepared to spend a few hours a day. Of course, there's nothing saying that you have to do it in four weeks. You can just take this learning plan and stretch it out over how long you need. If you only have an hour a week or a couple hours a day or whatever, you can just use this plan at your own speed. So let's talk a little bit about what the plan actually is. It's a four week plan where you'll learn the basics of programming in R, how to create visualizations and dashboards and share your analyses. And you'll also learn a little bit about machine learning and how to implement a couple of very popular, basic, but very important algorithms on which a lot of the rest of machine learning rests upon. So at the end of these four weeks, you will be able to confidently say that you know how to program in R. So in week one, you'll learn how to install R and use R Studio, which is the IDE that you'll program in for the most part whenever you're using R. We're gonna use a package called Swirl, which exists within R and it's an interactive package that teaches you basically the fundamentals of the language itself. In week one, you're also gonna go through the first eight chapters of the R for Data Science textbook that I'm gonna link, where you're gonna learn a lot more about the fundamentals of the programming language as well. In week number two, we're gonna spend time learning about data wrangling. You'll go through a large portion of the R for Data Science book. It's a very important section uh, where you'll learn how to import and clean data, which is necessary for the next part. Week three, we switch over to the Introduction to Statistical Learning textbook, commonly called ISLR, where we're gonna do chapters two through four. Essentially, what I want you to learn here is basically just what some of the math behind the simpler algorithms is, because it's just very important that you have that foundation. And finally, week four, we're gonna be talking about how to communicate and share your results in aesthetically pleasing ways using R Markdown. And make sure you stick around till the end of the video because once you get through these four weeks, the path kind of splits a little bit and you'll need to know a little bit more about which direction you ought to take depending on your own goals. So week one, learning the basics. This week, like I said, the first part is just gonna be about getting up and running with R. You're gonna download it and you're gonna download R Studio, the IDE that I mentioned before, and you're gonna be using the Swirl package, which I've linked above, to get started learning how the syntax of R works, how basic functions work, and how variable assignment, things that you need work. Now, Swirl is a great way to get started and learn how to do some simple scripting in R. And it's actually really great because it's interactive, so you're in R the entire time. But I also think that it lacks a little bit of the technical depth that I really think you should have as a foundation for R. 
So just take the time to do the first lesson in Swirl, which is the R programming lesson, because from there we're gonna switch over to a little bit more robust book called R for Data Science for our next steps. Honestly, this book contains everything you would need to get started. I just prefer Swirl for the fundamentals of R. It's just much easier to learn the basics in R when you're getting instant feedback from the system. But once you've got those basics down, I really think that R for Data Science is a really great comprehensive introduction that, yeah, it goes over some of those basics again, but repetition never hurt, and it goes more in depth on them, and it takes you a little bit further. So once you're finished with the first module in Swirl, I want you to go to the R for Data Science book and go from chapters one through eight. This will take you through the first of the five large sections that the book covers. And once you're done here, you're gonna have a fantastic foundation for week number two. Week one, we learned the basics of R programming. That includes basic math syntax in R, variable assignment, handling data frames, basic functions, simple EDA, and script writing. Week number two is all about data wrangling. Once you've got some of the programming basics down, it's really time to get your hands dirty dealing with data that's not the most clean. During this week's material, you'll learn about two popular ways to represent tabular or table data in R, the tibble and the data frame. Now, the R for Data Science book really makes heavy use of the tibble. In my experience, the data frame is a little bit more common in industry, but it's good to know both, and the book does cover both, so you're gonna have a good foundation regardless of the preferences of wherever you go. You'll also learn how to import data from CSVs and bring it into what's called the tidy standard, which is just a way of describing high quality, clean tabular data. There's also a chapter this week on relational data, and I do recommend you read it, but I'm planning on doing a 30-day SQL learning guide in the future, which is where you're really gonna learn more about relational data. That's where most people learn how relational data works is through learning SQL. And I'd recommend you do the same. Still read the chapter, it'll be a good primer, but I would say dive deeper into the SQL side later on. Look, I know this week's material is not the most entertaining, it's not as fun as the fundamentals that you learned last week. It's not as fun as the modeling you'll do next week, but cleaning the data is arguably the most important skill that I want you to take away from these four weeks. If you don't have high quality, clean, tidy data, then your model results will either be number one, uninterpretable, or number two, just flat out wrong. So it's very important that you take this week very seriously because the data wrangling is what you'll be spending most of your time doing if you're a data analyst or a data scientist, and it's also just the most important part. If you can't rely on your data, you can't rely on your model. Week two, we learned the basics of data wrangling. We learned tabular data structures in R. We learned how to import data from various sources, including CSVs. We learned how to clean and format data correctly. We learned string manipulation. We learned categorical data and we learned date and time data. Week three is all about an introduction to modeling in R, which is where the fun stuff begins to happen. Although I'll warn you, there's a good bit of math in this week. And it's gonna seem like we're jumping around a little bit, but it's for a good reason, because this week we're gonna be going into the Introduction to Statistical Learning, ISLR. The ISLR is a book all about statistical learning, as the name suggests, and machine learning, which uses R as its functional programming language to teach you. And the reason it's important for us to use this book is because it has a very in-depth explanation of the math behind the algorithms, which is what's really gonna set you apart in your career. Well, that and communication skills. But if you don't have the math skills, then you're just not gonna have the ability to really deploy any algorithms. Because once you get out into the real world, data is even messier and it is even harder to gather and it's even harder to interpret unless you really understand the math behind the model. Beyond that, ISLR has some great labs at the end of their chapters where they walk you through how to do what they've just explained in R, and they've got exercises that are also in R, and if you're clever, you can find other people's answers published on Google to compare yours to. 
I recommend you try to answer the questions without looking on Google first, but once you do, you can sort of check your work to see if you're on the right path. So you're gonna go through chapters two, three, and four in this book during week three. The second chapter is just an introduction to statistical learning, which sort of explains what the broad category means and essentially what all machine learning is attempting to do, which is to find a function to approximate relationships in the real world. It also explains some incredibly important statistical concepts like the bias variance trade-off, the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning, and the differences between regression and classification. Chapter three covers linear regression, which is really fundamental for an analyst or a data scientist to understand. Many, many, many other machine learning algorithms build on the concepts of linear regression. So really, really spend your time on this one and make sure you understand it front to back. Finally, chapter four covers classification, which is a pretty broad category of machine learning, but a very important one. You're gonna learn things like logistic regression and k-nearest neighbors and linear and quadratic discriminant analysis in chapter four. In week three, we learned the foundations of machine learning. We learned about the bias variance trade-off. We learned about the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. We learned some popular machine learning algorithms like linear regression, logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, and naive bays. Finally, week four is all about communicating your findings. You see, the findings that you can gather from your data and your models are worth nothing if you can't communicate them effectively to others. And before I mention math as one of the skill sets that would really set you apart in your career, communication is the other one. And arguably, it's even more important to some extent. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying math isn't important, and it is incredibly important, but I would take an analyst with decent math skills who knows their limitations, but has great communication skills over an analyst who has fantastic math skills, but can't communicate their results. So this week's material is mostly focused on R Markdown, uh, which is actually a particularly versatile way to share your R code and your outputs and your graphs and things like that. But it's not the only communication medium that you'll use during your career. However, the principles that are in the R for Data Science book chapters that we're reading this week are really universal. And I think that you'll find that they apply to things like Tableau or other business insight dashboards. It's worth noting, however, that the material that we're gonna learn in week four is only half of the equation. You can't learn how to craft an effective presentation or how to deliver a rousing speech from a book. So it's important that you take what you learn in this chapter and apply it in the real world. You can even just do an interesting analysis and record yourself presenting it to a make-believe audience. Honestly, you would be surprised how much better you would get at public speaking just by practicing by yourself. So really spend some time taking this week's concepts and applying them to the outside world. Do an analysis on something that you find interesting and sit your parents down and present the results of your findings to them. They might not find it interesting, but you'll get to practice communication skills, which will be very important in your career. In week four, we learned how to communicate our results effectively, particularly through R Markdown. We learned how the R Markdown file format functions. We learned how to format text in R Markdown. We learned how to use ggplot2 and R to create good looking visuals. And we learned how to publish our analyses as a presentation, a dashboard, and a website. So if you made it to the end of week four, then congratulations. You are officially an R practitioner. I would feel comfortable at that level putting R on my resume. And in fact, after the 30 days I spent teaching myself R, I did put it on my resume. So I would recommend you do the same. Now, I think that from here is where your path becomes a little bit split, depending on what your goals are. The way I see it, if you're interested in continuing to pursue R, you've got a couple of different options. Number one, I would say that if you're interested in becoming a data scientist, you should finish the ISLR book. There's a lot more machine learning algorithms in there and a lot more math, but if that's what you want, then that is a fantastic place to start. Now, if you're interested more in becoming a data analyst or a business analyst or something along those lines, then I'm gonna link a book above called Mastering Shiny. It's also down in the description. It's a book about using Shiny, which is an R package, to build websites and dashboards that are interactive. 
Of course, if you've had your fill of R, you could also learn Python. I've got another video that I've linked above on how I learned Python in under a month as well. So thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you found the video helpful, please leave a like below and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.